Pastor Dingo, and I want to tell you, uh, I want to invite you to uh, uh, this lesson of today, that is Organic Chemistry 1, in other words, hydrocarbons. Now, in our previous lesson, I was able to try my best to, to introduce to you the chapter uh, Organic Chemistry. And in that lesson, we were able to discuss a lot of things, one of which we identified carbon as the primary element in organic compounds. We were also able to mention some organic compounds that we know. That is, uh, for example, hydrocarbons, carbonates. We talked about things to do with uh, proteins, uh, lipids, vitamins, nucleic acids, and so on. Now, we also went ahead to identify groups or families of organic compounds, especially in this uh, syllabus, and we identified them as um, alkenes, alkenes, alkynes, alcohols, alkanoic acids, and also esters. Now, we also discussed about the functional groups and also types of formula that are used in organic uh, chemistry, uh, which we talked about uh, the displayed formula, structural formula, empirical formula and uh, molecular uh, molecular formulas. Now today I want us now to start with the first part because I said we are going to divide in my lessons we are going to divide organic chemistry into three. The first part will be organic chemistry one which will talk about hydrocarbons. Organic chemistry two I talked about will talk about alcohols, alkanoic acids and esters and finally organic chemistry three we will be able to discuss detergents and polymers. Now without wasting time let us come to uh, organic chemistry, one which is mainly going to deal with hydrocarbons. And I want to invite you to understand that uh, based on those chemical families, or what we call homologous series, uh, we are, I want to identify three families, or three homologous series. The number one will be alkenes, alkenes. Number two, alkenes, alkenes. Number three, alkynes. So this homologous series, these three homologous series are all referred to as hydrocarbons. These are all referred to as hydrocarbons. Now, we know the word hydrocarbon has a meaning and usually students are asked to be able to define what hydrocarbon is. So we'll say that hydrocarbon is a compound or a molecule, is a compound, a compound, a compound, made up of made up of carbon and hydrogen only and hydrogen and hydrogen only this is what hydrocarbon is hydrocarbon so uh, it could be a compound or a molecule you can say that consists of or, or whatever but whatever word you use to refer to, to the effect of that particular thing to mean that it, had, it must be able to have only two elements. Now, many students confuse this definition. When students are normally asked to define what hydrocarbon is, they just say it's a compound that contains carbon and hydrogen. That do not give you any mark because even carbohydrates contains carbon and hydrogen. But the word only here is very key. You must mention the word only. If you don't mention that, believe me, you will not be able to score a mark because uh, if I talk about carbohydrates like glucose C6, H12, O6, and I talk about ethane, methane, sorry, methane is here. This one here, both of these compounds carry hydrogen and carbon, but this one we can say carbon and hydrogen only, but this one we cannot say only because there's oxygen here also. So that's when the definition of a hydrocarbon must have the word only or any other word you can find i don't think if there is any word that you can find to, re to refer to the word only you can say a compound uh, consisting of only carbon and hydrogen the word only is still appearing there but you cannot do away with it now let's come back to uh we have understood what hydrocarbons are they are compounds made of carbon and hydrogen only and i've said uh, those compounds that are made up of carbon and hydrogen only those organic compounds the families are three, alkenes, the first member, alkenes, alkynes. So all these three, you can realize that the first three homologous series out of the six we talked about last time, we are going to discuss them under organic chemistry one. Now, 
Uh, I want to also briefly, before I start with Alkens, I want to briefly explain that as I discussed the other day when I was talking about functional groups, alkanes have single bonds. That actually is what we are going to refer to as its, it's uh, uh, what? It's functional group. So there's a, fu a single bond between carbon to another carbon atom. Alkenes is uh, uh, a double bond. So because I've said that um, these compounds here, these compounds here are made of carbon and hydrogen. It means that any other thing that is going to attach to these bonds will be hydrogen. Then alkynes here will be triple bond. So you realize that the only thing that is going to differentiate these particular families is the number of carbon 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 bonds that they have. If you have a single carbon carbon bond throughout the structure or the displayed formula, we say it's alkenes, and, and alkenes will be when it's a double bond, and alkynes when it has a triple bond. Now, after establishing that particular idea about what hydrocarbon is, I want to quickly now go to what we mean by alkenes. And I want to uh, discuss the first family, that is alkenes. Now, alkenes, if I will say, I'll say alkenes are hydrocarbons. Now that we know what hydrocarbons are, I'll say, I'll say it's an homologous series. Uh, in the hydrocarbons which are saturated. Let me use the word saturated. These are terms that we are now going to really learn how to do. So what do we mean by saturated? I want to assume that I have uh, the first member here. I said uh, the second member. Don't worry about this. We are going to explain this, all of it, just in a minute, in a moment. So we have ethane. This is called ethane. You realize that this ethane can even add it to be the third member, which is propane. If I have this one here, you realize that um, there is a presence of single bonds in this single carbon-carbon bonds. Whenever there's single, single, single carbon-carbon bonds in a compound or in hydrocarbon, you say that one is a saturated hydrocarbon. We know that saying hydrocarbon, if someone asks you in examination to define what is meant by the term saturated hydrocarbon, there are a lot of marks there. One, you have to define what saturated is, then you have to tell us what hydrocarbon is. Don't just say saturated hydrocarbon, then you concentrate on saturated, you leave the hydrocarbon alone. The, those are two terms that are supposed to be defined separately. Now, saturated means consisting of single bonds. Consisting, consisting of single carbon, carbon bonds. It means that the opposite of saturated is unsaturated. So something that is unsaturated will actually be the other families, which is alkenes and alkynes. Uh, something that is unsaturated consists of double carbon-carbon bonds or triple carbon-carbon bonds. So when you are told what is saturated, don't try to explain many things that all the bonds are used up. That is now giving much more details. But the shortest way of explaining what something saturated is is simply by saying it has single carbon, or you can say single covalent, uh, or carbon-carbon covalent bonds, because this bond is covalent. It has single carbon-carbon covalent bonds. But unsaturated means it has either double covalent, double carbon-carbon bonds, or triple carbon-carbon bonds. So if you are told saturated hydrocarbon, I expect you to first of all define what saturated is. Then you come to say what hydrocarbon is, because the examiner will be able to see, is your definition explaining what saturated is? Is your definition carrying what hydrocarbon is? Something that students normally forget. Sometimes some are told saturated hydrocarbon, they go for the, the one they know is easy for them to explain, and then leave the other one, or go for this one and leave this one. And sometimes the question is two marks. If it is two marks, be very careful. Now, so now we know what saturated is. So it means that alkenes are saturated because we have said their functional group is actually because it's actually arising from the single, single carbon, carbon bond. So that is what we mean by saturated. So one of the things I want you to remember every time is that alkenes are saturated. If they're saturated, therefore, it means that this thing here is very inert relatively not compared to the other hydrocarbons. What do we mean by re relatively not? Something inert, it means that chemically unreactive. Chemically 
chemically if someone asks you to explain what is meant by inert it means chemically unreactive so alkanes are relatively inert i'm saying relatively inert meaning they are not very unreactive but they are unreactive compared to if we compare them to alkenes and alkynes they are fairly unreactive so this one is what we call inert chemically inert why are they chemically inert they are chemically inert because they are saturated those terms are just following they are saturated why what makes wh why what's wrong with saturated and 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 and, and inert if they are saturated it means that they are all the bonds they have all carbon here all the carbon atoms here all of all their bonds filled up there's no bond remaining somewhere idle that something else can attach to it means therefore that for us to add another element here or another atom here we must remove one what we call substitution so we have to replace one with another just like 11 players in the pitch they can't be 12. so it means that when people are playing that those players there are saturated for you to put one in you have to take one out that is exactly what is happening with alke alkanes so if someone asks you whether they're inert they are inert because they're saturated meaning all the carbon the four carbon bonds are completely used up for you to add anything you must remove one so it means that alkanes fairly will not want to react with any other thing basically because all the bonds are used up. If maybe one bond was hiding somewhere like in alkenes where one is not really used up, then we know we can simply break that one and use it up without actually removing anything. But with alkenes, that is not possible. So we are going to see that alkenes are fairly reactive than alkenes. And alkynes will be much more reactive than even alkenes. So we are going to see that when we reach that particular point. But for now, I will be able to describe to you what we mean by saturated and why they are saturated. And if they're saturated, how that relates to them being inert. I said, if a man who has not married one wife, who has not married, will want to marry. So we can say that man is very reactive. But once you marry uh, a, a woman, then it means that uh, you will be some kind of comfortable there. You are kind of comfortable. I know sometimes polygamous societies can men can marry more than one. But when, what about when we talk about women? A woman in our societies can only marry one wife. So it means that before they marry, they are they are very reactive. But once they marry, it means that they are fairly stable where they are, and they will not want to entangle or or, or meet another man outside there, especially for marriage. That's exactly what we mean by alkanes. Consider alkanes as something that very stable. They are stable because all the bonds are occupied, and for you to remove one, you must use some energy. And that's why we are going to see substitution and substitution reactions uh, taking a lot of uh, what we call UV light. Now, we have seen alkanes, and another idea I want to bring in is the general formula of alkanes. We talked about it yesterday, the general formula. General formula, because we said this is a, form, a family. A family of compounds, they are a family because they share certain things. And one of the things they share here is the general formula, which is CN H2N plus 2. So all alkanes will conform to this particular formula. It means that if I know the value of n, where n must be an integer, probably a whole number, I need, I can easily get hydrogen. So it means that if I have, uh, if I know the number of n, which is the number of carbon atoms, in this case n is equals to carbon atoms. So if I know n, number one, I can say what about if n is one? It means that h will be 2 times n, and our n is 1, so that is 2 times 1, which is 2 plus 2, is 4. So we will get the first member of alkanes being CH4. If I n is 2, I'll say C2H, we know 2 times n, where n is 2, so 2 times 2 is 4, plus 2 is 6. This is the second member. If n is 3, I'll say C3H, H is 2 times n, where n is 3, that is 6 plus 2, 8. What about if n is 10? H will be 2 times 10, which is 20, plus 2 is 22. What about if n is 50? It will be C, n, C, 50, here, H, 50 times 2 is 100. 100 plus 2 is 102. You realize that this thing is easy. What about if n is 11? find out where what the value of h 
will will be now we have seen how to use these numbers and the general formula to get the molecule what i want now to go on to f talk about today is um, uh, some of the things we, are, we need to know especially when you're dealing with what we call nomenclature of alkanes nomenclature under alkanes nomenclature is simply a series of rules that we need to use when we are naming these compounds uh, why do we need to use rules we need to use rules because these organic compounds are very many organic compounds are very many and it must be very important that scientists must also be able to 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 communicate communication meaning that they can really understand what compound has been found in which country and so they can be able to understand based on the rules that have been put forward these rules have been put forward by an organization international organ international organization called IUPAC or sometimes just called IUPAC IUPAC that's pronunciation, don't say that's the abbreviation. Now, IUPAC is uh, in form, is called International, International, International for I, International Union, Union of, that of is not given uh, any letter there, of PUA and applied chemistry so you see this this one's here that's what we call IUPAC so this IUPAC is the international organization that actually give rules on how we can actually name a compound so it means that if anybody any scientist finds a compound in whichever country or where they are they will use the rules of IUPAC to be able to give that compound a name. It's almost like uh, the scientific name of organisms in biology. So here we also have some kind of uh, scientific names of these compounds. We know that these this compounds may have different common names. For example, methane. Methane was initially called marsh. Marsh based on the fact that it was gotten from marsh, decaying plant materials. So decaying plant materials, some of them are cow dungs and the rest, was producing methane. So it, was, it got its name from there. But that name was found not to be very, 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 uh, very scientific in nature because uh, what about if there are other gases found from the same marsh? What name will it be given? It means that probably two gases will be given the same name. So uh, th then we have now the IUPAC that gives them identity, the, 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 the name that is scientific the name that scientists will use, not the name like a common person will use. Now, so this organization, we are going to look at basic rules. There are many rules that are considered very complicated organic compounds, but since we are dealing with high school chemistry, we'll only be talking about basic rules that are going to be enough for us to name the compounds we are going to meet in the course of our study. And uh, I will identify some of these rules or some of the things we are expected to do. Number one, we are going to talk about the stem name, the stem of names, or the stems of names. Some books call it the chords. Now, the stem of the names uh, uh, represent or represent or stand in for the number of carbon atoms. Number of carbon atoms. So, number of carbon atoms are going to be given a name. For example, one will have a stem that is going to refer to it. Number two will have a stem name that is going to refer to it. So when you see that particular stem in a name, already you know how many carbon atoms are in that particular compound. So this stem name, usually it refers to not all the carbon atoms, but it will refer to what we call a straight chain. Because some name, some compounds or some co organic compounds may have long chains. So if they have long chains with branches, it means that the stem name will not actually include the branches. It will be the one which has the longest carbon uh, atoms. Because if I have maybe this chain of compounds, and then I have another one here, another I have another one there, and I have another one there, it means that in this, I have, I have how many chains here? One, 
two, three. There's another one here. There's another one there. There's another one here. There are many chains based on where, where, what we are going to do. Now, the longest of this, the longest of this, for example, if I say one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So it means that this one is the longest. So the longest here is going to be given the one that is going to be represented by the stem name or the stem of the name. It means that uh, uh, when we give this, the name using this one, this longest chain here, this becomes the branches. These branches here, we call them side chains. We are going to talk about these side chains later on. We can have a side chain, or it could be actually a functional, a functional group uh, hanging outside there. We are going to see later on. So any of those things can be what we call branches. So branches there, we are going to have names that, are, again, if you are now counting, you can determine the total number of carbon atoms in a compound without actually counting. Because from the name, you can already know the stem name carries this, the branch has this one, the branch has this one. So you add together, then you get the final name of that particular compound. Now, the stem here now, therefore, we are going to give a list. Some of these names, you have stems, you have met them in mathematics. Uh, if you have number one, carbon atoms, carbon atoms. So if we have carbon atoms and then the stem is here. So if I have one carbon atom, the stem of that should be meth. It means that any compound starting with meth, you know that it has one carbon atom in the chain, the, the, the longest carbon carbon chain. Number two is eth. Number three is prop. Number four is but. Number five is pent. So you realize that pent, pentagon, that is something you have met in math, in primary. We have six, hex, seven, hept, eight, Oct, nine, non, and ten, deck. So this, these are kind of the stems. It means that they tell us if you meet prop, already you know that in the, the, the longest carbon carbon chain has three carbon atoms. If it is hex, you know the longest carbon carbon chain has six carbon atoms. So this is something that is going to be very easy for us. It means that if if I draw a straight compound here, straight uh, alkene, for example, if I draw this, this is not branching. So I just draw it this way. And then I ask you, what is this one? What is this? We need to know this thing up to number 10. Uh, because there's no branch here, the name is fairly simple. Unless there's a branch, we need to go now to a lot of rules in the nomenclature to really find out what that name is. But for this one, we will simply count the longest chain is here. Nothing else other than hydrogen is branching. If, if nothing here, no, if anything other than hydrogen is branching, then we have to put that thing in the name. But in this case, hydrogen is not really included. So we have one, two, three, four, five. So this compound here is saturated. It means that it has single carbon-carbon bonds, meaning it belongs to alkanes. We have identified that. Then secondly, it has five carbon atoms. We come to our, our list here of stem names and we see uh, five carbon atoms, it is here. It is starting, the stem is pent. The, the stem is pent. After we identify the stem is pent, we have to really know, we know that we have what we call the suffix. Suffixes. The suffixes of these particular names will be referring to the family, the homologous series where that particular compound is coming from. Then the homologous series, we, in this case, we have said is alkanes. Alkanes, the suffix is A-N-E. A-N-E. That's the suffix that we have to identify probably the functional group of this particular uh, compound. So if it, the suffix is N, then we are going to say the name is pentane. We just add 
uh, that suffix on the name. So you see the way this one is fairly easy. So it means that this particular name here has two parts. It has the stem, which is the pent here, to tell us how many carbon atoms are there. And it has got the ANE, the suffix, which tells us from which homologous series is this compound coming from. And ANE, like I said in the previous lesson, represents single carbon-carbon bonds. That's what we mean by ANE. So we pronounce it as N, pentane. So pentane here, therefore, is the name of this particular molecule. I believe, viewers, that is very clear. What about if I do this? If I do this... If I put this compound here, the way this one is... This compound again here is is we start looking at it this way. Let us find how many atom, carbon atoms. Hydrogen atoms will not, is not significant in determining the name, but carbon atoms are. Now, let's look at it. There are one, two, three, four. Four carbon atoms. Let's look for the, 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 the stem name, or what we call the parent name. The stem name here is having four carbon atoms. So it is starting with but. The stem is but. So if the stem is but, let me write it here. Some students say but. It doesn't matter what you do with it as long as you know how to write it. Now, if it is but or it is but, no problem. We now have to determine, look at the compound again. Is it having a double bond? Is it having a triple bond? Is it having a single carbon-carbon bond? And from what I'm seeing, there is single carbon-carbon bonds. From here, the single, the single, the single. And I said single carbon bond, the suffix is N. It is telling us the family which ends with N. N represents single carbon-carbon bonds. So we are going to take this N as the suffix and add it here. So if you add but or but plus N, you will end up with butane. Butane becomes the name. Or you can say butane if you want to write it that way. Now, we have got the name of this particular compound. And you see how fairly simple it is. That is for straight chain. It means from now using these two examples, if I draw one with one, two, three, up to ten carbon atoms, I believe viewers you can be able to give them names very simply and be able to be happy that actually you have learned something in this particular lesson. Let us move a little ahead. We have talked about two things here. We have talked about the stem. I've talked about the stem, the stem name. I've talked about the suffix. And remember, in this case, I'm simply talking about the suffix of alkanes only. And I said the suffix of alkane is just one. I want now to move to a level where we are going to have something different. But viewers, Forgive me for not showing you this. What about if I have something like this? What about if I have something like this? Before we go move to the next part, if you have something like this, we have something like this. I've, get, I've seen students getting confused for nothing. Students, some students will think that since this thing is bending, then it means that this one is now actually a branch. No, 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 viewers. A chain. You have seen a chain. Some of you have dogs at home. Uh, a chain, you can put a chain, a chain can be straight, it can be bending, a chain can be taking any shape. As long as this chain has nothing coming from the middle, branching like that, it is simply a straight chain. Continuous straight chain. So we'll say one, two, three, four, five. There's nothing coming here. So it means simply we are simply making a, a bend. A band is, doesn't mean it's a branch. So this one is one thing, the way it is. So we are simply going to sound one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You see? What about if it was coming down here, C? Then that one actually presents a problem because it means that uh, uh, I will say there are two roots I can take. I can say one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You can see that I'm counting up to almost three levels. That means that now I'm dealing with a branch. And in this case, we are going to see what that, how you are going to deal with that. But if I remove that and I leave it this way, this is simply a straight chain, just like this. I can simply put this carbon here, I put this one here, and I make it a straight thing like this, without anything branching from it. So if this one is what we have here, let's name it now. 
Now that you know how to name it, we said the first thing we deal with how many carbon atoms are there, and we have said there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There are seven atoms. Seven is hept, so we are here. So we have hept. Hept is the stem name. We know this hept. We must add it to the to the suffix, and the suffix is a n e for alkane. So we are going to say a n e. How do we know we should add a n e? We check the bonds that are there. Is there a double bond? No. Is there a triple bond? No. What is there? Single carbon bond throughout. So we end with a n e, meaning we have the name alkanes. So our name here is hept plus n. We end with heptane. Heptane become our name. Viewers, this is simple and I think it's very enjoyable. Let us go to a more challenging question where now we are going to use what we call two things, which I'm going to call the prefix. This prefix, I'm going to add what we call a locant and I'm going to add what we call a multiplying, multiplying prefixes. Let me leave multiplying prefixes. Let me introduce this one first before I bring in that idea lastly. So assuming, and viewers, I want to assume that these stems, you have sketched them somewhere because at some point I may want to rub them and then try to see uh, more uh, complicated uh, diagrams here or displayed formula. Now, let's, let me have a, a, a displayed formula of this nature, this type. Then I say this is CH3. Then I have these ones, H, H everywhere. So viewers, you see that this question here, it doesn't take the shape of the other ones we have looked at before. Why? Because this compound here now has something branching. And what is branching here, we are going to call what is branching here uh, a side chain. It can be a side chain. And mostly, these branching things are side chains. Side chain, meaning another chain of hydrocarbon, something like hydrocarbon uh, side chains. And these side chains can be alkyls. Other than alkyls, it could be halogens. Bromine, chlorine, fluorine, and so on. Other than that, it can be a functional group, but in this case, I don't want to bring the functional group because that means we are going to go to alcohol and whatever. Let's leave that one for uh, the next lesson in alcohol. So let's just stick to these two here. These are the ones we have to meet in this particular sub-chapter or this homologous series. So in this case, we are actually having a side chain, which has, instead of having CH3, CH4, this is methane. This is methane, the first member. But this one here, it is having something like this, CH3 dash. Let me have that bond there, meaning that a hydrogen has been removed. So anytime you have an alkane with one hydrogen less, the name, we remove this A-N-E, this suffix here, and we add another suffix, "-il". So it will be the stem, meth, plus "-il". So it will be methyl. Methyl, methyl as the, the, the name of this. Remember, this is not a compound. It's unstable. It, doesn't, it can't exist like this. But it is possible for us to have something like this because we need one extra bond to, uh, to attach, to link on this particular chain that we have here. So it means that if I have a thin, which is C2H6, that is a thin. This is a thin. It means that if I move to form an alkyl out of ethane, I simply move one hydrogen. So it will be C2H5 with a hanging bond, and I say this one now is ethyl. And I can have propyl and I can have butyl. What is propyl? Propyl will be C3H8, that is propane. But we said we have to remove one hydrogen, so it will be seven, but a bond must be hanging there. This is propyl. We can have butyl, pentyl, we can even have dekyl. So it means that it's up to you to determine what bond is hanging there. Now, I've seen students sometimes, if they write it this way, they think they know. But if some examiner writes CH3 and CH2, 
with the bond, then they say we don't know this particular compound. Remember, this is now a molecular formula, this is a structural formula. This thing and this thing are simply the same. So don't be confused with very small things. Now, let me now bring you a to idea to, of the prefix and the locant. We know the stem. The stem is the center. Whatever is after the stem is the suffix. Whatever is before the stem becomes the prefix. So we want to know now uh, how does this uh, prefix now come in. So we, we talk about uh, this compound, one, two, three. We said that when we're naming the compound, we take a chain with the highest number of carbon atoms. So we have one here, one, two, three, four, five, six. We have the one with six. Then we have another chain, one, two, three, four. We have another one with four. Then we have one, two, three, four, five. We have another one with five. So viewers, uh, this is six carbon atoms, four carbon atoms, five carbon atoms. All of them are found in this particular compound or molecule. So this one is the highest, meaning, and how, where did we get it? Here, one, two, three, four, five, six. So this is our longest carbon carbon chain where we are going to get the stem name. And therefore the stem has five or six carbon atoms. So let's come to our list here. Six is here, hex. So that is hex. We start there by writing our hex. Now, before we go further, we want to know what is the suffix? Because we know how to get that. In this molecule, if you look at it, there are single bonds everywhere. Single, 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 single. We say that whatever single bonds between carbon atoms is an alkane. The suffix is A-N-E. So we'll add here A-N-E. So this is my parent name. Parent name. The name of the parent of this compound is exane. But this parent name here Something is hanging here. Something is hanging here. This thing hanging here is branching. So this branching here we have said is a side chain. This side chain, what is the name? Let us go back to what we call the names of side chain where we talk about alkyls. Alkyls and this is being the first one will be methyl. The second one is ethyl. The third one is propyl. So we are going to say this one is now the prefix. The prefix meaning come before. So we are going to have methyl. Yes, we can say methylexane. But someone will ask you a question and you will not be able to answer very easily. You are saying methylexane. I agree. It means that the parent chain is having six carbon atoms. Then there is a carbon atom branching from it. But where is it branching from? Which point? Which location? What is the location of that particular branching group? The location of that particular branching group, the number to locate it is what we call the locant now. So the locant will be the position of the branching or the side chain that is coming from there. So if I start by saying, okay, if I start from this side, one, two, three, four, five, six. If I start from this other side, the locant is three. The position to which this carbon that is branching this side chain is attached is carbon number three. That is our locant. What about if I start from here? One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five, six. If I start from my right hand side going to the left, my locant becomes four. Now this is very interesting. It means someone can say, okay, then we have two names where the locant is three and where the locant is four. But nomenclature, the IUPAC as a rule, that we have to give the name with the locant that is the smallest number. In this case, the smallest number is three. It means that we have to start naming this compound from the end which is closer to the side chain that is branching from this particular group. And I can tell that this side chain is closer to this end than that end. Because if I start from this end, it's located to number four. If I start from this end, it's located in carbon number three. So we'll say therefore that the locant therefore is three dash. This part here is my locant. It is telling me that the branching group methyl is connected to the third carbon atom in the chain exane, meaning the chain with six carbon atoms. So how do we read this thing? We say the name therefore of this particular compound I've drawn here is three methyl exane. Three methyl, they don't say three dash methyl, no. Three methyl hexane. That is the name of this particular molecule. You see 
how this is very interesting. We have been able to explain what a stem is, and I believe you understand. We have gone to the suffix for alkanes, you have seen, we have understood that one. We have gone to the prefix, you have understood here. The prefix could be alkyls, ethyl, methyl, propyl, butyl, blah, blah, as you continue. It can also be halogen, bromine. Now, if it is bromine, if you have bromine, the, 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 the prefix will be given bromo, not bromine. If it is chlorine, it will be chloro. It is fluorine, it will be fluoro. If it is iodine, it will be iodo. So these are also going to feature here. So let us now see. We have seen a case where we have a branching coming. What about if you have two identical branches? For example, for example, if you have C, 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 we have this, and we have this. What about if you have this compound here? Remember that we can also go to our case by looking, at, looking for the longest, the longest chain. Remember, viewers, what we are doing right now is dealing with naming. Naming, I've said for us to name this compound, we have to follow what we refer to as the nomenclature. Nomenclature is a set of rules brought forward to us by an international organization called uh, IUPSC, or in short, IOPAC, meaning International Union of Pure and Applied Chemistry instructing us on how to name these compounds so that we can make the work of scientists easier. Let's look at this compound again. The first thing we said, stem. Stem is where we start from. So stem is how many carbon atoms are in this chain? One, two, three, four, five. There is five, a chain of five carbon atoms. One, two, three. There's a chain of three carbon atoms. One, two, three, four. There's a chain of four carbon atoms. One, two, three, four, five. We have seen that is there. If I say one, two, three, four, another four is there. Now we see that in all these chains, the longest carbon carbon chain is having five carbon atoms. Let's come to the identify its stem. The stem here, five here, is pent. So I'll say pent is here. Pent is the parent uh, or the stem name. Now from the stem name, what is the suffix? The suffix will tell us the homologous series. The suffix here, let's come to the component check how many bonds are between the carbon atoms. One, one, single, single, all, all of them are single carbon, carbon bonds. So it means single carbon bonds means alkanes ending with A, N, E. So we'll add A, N, E there. So my parent name is Penten. Penten is my parent name. Then we said we look for anything branching from this chain. The chain was here. This was the chain. But if I take this chain, is there anything other than hydrogen branching from that chain? I see two. There is one here and there is one here. What, is the, what are those branches? These branches is CH3. CH3 is an alkyl group. An alkyl for the first group with a one carbon atom means methyl. So we'll say methyl. But these branching groups are two. One, two. I'm seeing two of them. We have to bring in another idea here called multiplying prefixes. Multiplying. Multiplying prefixes. So this multiplying prefixes only come in if you have more than one identical branching uh, chains or, or, or side chains. For example, if I had ethyl and ethyl, they are the same. So I'm going to bring in the multiplying prefixes. These multiplying prefixes are some uh, small prefixes attached to the other prefix. If it is one, we write nothing. If it is two, we add di. If it is three, we add tri. Three, we add tri. If it is four, we add tetra. If it is five, we add penta, six hexa. Now they are there. The only difference is from one to four here. But the rest now will follow suit. So we have di, 
3 tri, 4 tetra, 5 penta. Let's come to our compound. We have how many? We have two identical methyls. So these two we have to bring in di. So I will put di. This di means two times. So we have two times methyl, meaning there are two methyls. Then from there we can say the name is dimethylpentane. You are almost there, but there's something missing. The locant is missing. To what position are these two methyl, I mean methyl branches attached? Are they attached to the same carbon atom? If yes, what is the position of that carbon atom? How to give position? Just number one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. We can name it from here or from there. But let us see, if I start from here, one, two. The first branch is on the second carbon atom. Meaning the locant, if I start from here, it's on the second carbon atom. Remember the third will not really give me a problem. Let me start from the other side. One, two, three. The first is on the third carbon atom. If I start from the other side, the first branch is on the third carbon atom. So it means that, where do I start? We said that the, the, the side, the, the end you are starting from must be the one closest to the first branch. So we have four and three. From left, we have the first branch of the second carbon atom. From right, we have the first branch of the third carbon atom. We are going to choose two. So it means that this compound will be named from the left. So naming it from the left meaning that the first locant is two, the second locant is three. So how will we bring these locants together? The way we are going to bring these locants together will be two for the first one, comma, three, then dash dimethylpentane. So if you forget this one, it will be 23. 23, if someone asks you, where's 23 in, and the longest chain was 5? Then you will remain with your eyes open, without your mouth opening. So we have a comma here to tell us that these are not, it's not one number, but two numbers. Meaning, we have two methyls here. This tells us we have two. It is telling us the first methyl is on the second carbon atom. The other methyl is on the third carbon atom. So generally there are two methyls. Those methyl, those methyl are branching from a chain with five carbon atoms pentane. And that and this chain there, there's no double bond. There are only single bonds. That's why we have N. So this is the name here. How do we read this name? Two, three, dimethyl pentane. Not two, comma, three, dash, meta. That's craziness. You have to stick to it. This comma and the dash must not appear. So this part here is going to be our locant, all of it. This part here, multiplying prefixes. This part here, the, the prefix. This pent, the stem. In here, the suffix. Your name must be able to be explained. You cannot just write a name which is going to be very hard to really see. So viewers, I see, I think you are understanding what I'm trying to do here. Naming compounds become part of something that people, students fear. But believe me, from today, if you fear it again, you should go to the church, probably Dr. Pastor War, to pray for you. Let us see another example, which is uh, another example, which is having a different case that we have not seen. I want to have a case where we have the branches, but the branches are not identical. For example, if I have this. Then I say this is Br, this one Cl, H, H, H everywhere. We are now having bromine and chlorine on the same compound. Or before I go there, let's just have bromine purely, because you have not given an example where only halogens are branching. Let us see, or let me now say they are on the same carbon atom, because they have also seen students having issues. If they are there, now when we are drawing this display for me, don't let these sticks or this what I'm drawing here touch the, the atoms. They should just be hanging like that. So we have Br now and Br on the same carbon atom. Let us first of all identify the stem. The stem is one, two, three, four, five, six. So six meaning hex. So the stem name here is hex. 
Let's go back again and check. Is there a double bond? No. Is there a triple bond? No. What is there? Single carbon bonds. So it means the suffix is N to mean um, alkanes. Then let's come to before the parent name. This thing we got here is the parent name. It tells you the longest chain and it tells there's no double bond, there's no triple bond, only single bonds, and it tells you that it has six carbon atoms. Then let us come to the prefix. The prefix we start with what is branching. What is branching here is a halogen atoms and it is bromine and I said if it is bromine we use bromo so bromo becomes here we have bromo there but this bromo here we have two bromine atoms one is here another one is here so we are going to say dibromo because we said we have multiplying prefixes to tell us if there are one, more than one identical branches so there is dibromo meaning there are two bromine atoms but we are want to locate them so we are going to identify the locants when we locate this thing let me name from one two three four five six one two three four five six if in an exam you can put these numbers in pencil so if i start from the left the first branch or at least both of them are on the fourth locant so the locant if i start from the left hand side is number four but if I start from the right hand side, the locant is three. Now I said that we have to give the locant, the name with the locant from the point, the, the end that is closer to the locant position. In this case, three is closer to the, 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 the right end than four, which is from the left one. So I'll take three. So I'll say three for the first, because we know they are diabromo, they are two. So what is the second one? The second one, again, if I start from this other end, is on the third carbon atom still, because these three may be for this one, and these three may be for this one, or whichever way you want to, want, want to put it. So we are going to have three, three. Remember, if you say die, I expect to see two digits here, to represent that there are two. The positions are two there. If they try, I expect three numbers. If tetra, I expect to see four numbers. So if you write tetra, and then there are two numbers, you are wrong. Before a teacher marks that question, don't even take it to the teacher. Just mark it wrong and start again. Let's look at it again this way. 3, 3, because why? The locant, the two bromine atoms are on the third carbon atom. The first is 3, the second or the third one. But those carbon atoms are 2, so die. What atoms are there? Bromine atoms. The, 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 the longest carbon chain has how many carbon atoms? 6, hex. And the suffix, N, meaning it is an alkane. So we are going to read this question as 3, 3, dibromo hexane and you see it is simple let me now go to the question that i wanted to show you where you have the branches but those branches are not identical those branches are not identical for example if you have bromine there let me put there hydrogen let me put here uh, methyl Methyl, yes. So, let us see this compound here. Well, let me now add one, see there. So, we have a case here. The first thing we do, the parent name or the stem name. The stem name here is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. You see, 1, 2, 3. We have 7, we have 7. If I have 7, come one going this way, this becomes the branch. If I have 7 going this way, this becomes the branch. I prefer using the straight one. So I'll take 7 for this, so that this one becomes a branch. So I'll say a 7 meaning it is hept. Then I check, is there a double bond? No. Is there a triple bond? No. They are only single carbon-carbon bonds. The homologous with the single single carbon bonds is alkanes. So I say A-N-E, hepten. Hepten is now my parent name. Now let me come to the prefixes. The prefixes here are now are now going to trick us. People are going to start struggling to understand now what, what do we do now here. But listen, when we have two branches, one methyl, because CH3 is a methyl, another one here is bromine, which is bromo. Now we are supposed to use what we call alphabetical order alphabetical order if i say methyl and bromo 
I think my alphabetical, my class one letters are still okay. So it means bromine B appears before M. So it means that, in fact, B is number three, number two, actually, A, B. M is so far away. So M, the one that appears first will appear first in the name. So it means we are going to have bromo somewhere, then methyl, then we have pentane. So that rule comes in when you have different branches. Different branches, you have to follow al alphabetical order to know which one appears first. So the branch that is going to appear first here is bromo. So we are going to say that bromo methyl. So it means I can say, I can start writing outwards from inwards coming in front. Let me start with the methyl. Because I've said that bromo will come first, then methyl, then heptane. So we have methyl, but this methyl is one. So di is not there or tri is not there. Then we just have the prefix already there. What is this locant? When you start one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. If I start from the left, the locant is two. If I start from the right, the locant is six. We said that we'll prefer two over six because we have to name it from the end where it is closest to. So we are going to have two, two, methyl. So we are finished with the first branch, methyl. We are going to bromine. Bromine here is now coming in. We have to put a dash to separate them. So we have bromo. We know bromo is there. So the next thing is to put actually its locant. So the locant here will be we, if we start from one, two, three, four, from the right, the locant is four. From here, the locant is four. This is interesting. If you have a balancing case like this, where you start from the other side, you start from the other side, it's balancing, but there's already methyl, which was starting at two. So it means that we have to fall to starting from this other end. Viewers, I want to, you to make, understand that particular concept very well. If I start from here, it is four. If I start from here, it is four. What about if another bromine was here? I will be forced to start from here and not there. Why? Because now I fall back to methyl to determine where I'm starting from. Because bromine cannot really tell me where to start from. So that is very key for you to, to understand. So even if bromine, uh, bromine now here is number four. Four is the center. So we are going to say four is here. So it will be four bromo, two methyl heptane. This is going to be the name of this particular compound. And you see, it is very simple. Even if there are six branches, you are just going to follow that order, alphabetical order. It, the name will belong, yes, but at least you will know what you are doing. Let me invite you again to a case here where I have C, C. Assuming this is a different case altogether. It's a different case altogether. And then I have, right now I'm writing a full displayed formula. A full displayed formula is here. Now, we need to be able to determine this name. And the name here is uh, having branches. For us to determine what is branching from what, we have to first of all identify how many strong long chains do we have. If I start from here, one, two, three. So there's a chain with three carbon atoms. One, two, three, four, five, six. There's a chain with six carbon atoms. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Chain with seven carbon atoms. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six, we have identified that. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six, we have identified that. One, two, three, four, five, six. We have identified that. So the longest one is seven. If the longest chain is seven, so the name still starts with hept. That is our stem. So stem here, it is alkane because we have single carbon carbon bond. So we are going to have a 10. So what about the 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 the, the, the prefixes? These prefixes we have if we have taken this one as our longest chain. So if you have taken this one as our longest chain, it means that this is a branch. 
This one is also a branch. But if you look at this branch, it has one carbon atom and three hydrogen. If you look at this one, it's two carbon atoms with five. So they are not the same. It means that this branch here is C2H5. It is CH3. So we are going to say between ethyl and methyl. We have to look at the alphabetical order. Ethyl and methyl. So E, e is coming ahead of eth, meth. So it means that methyl will still be the first closer to that. What is this locant? The locant of this methyl, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So locant, four, four. Whether I start from there, whether I start from here is four. So we'll say four. Then I've identified this four, it means that I have to go now to the ethyl. Now we realize that ethyl was, at the, meth, ethyl was at the center, but methyl now, do we start from there because this is still four here? No, we are going to start from here because according to ethyl, we could not decide the side because it was four, four. So we are going to start from this other side, which means it will be on the second carbon atom. So we're going to say um, this one is ethyl. So it will be two ethyl four, methyl heptane, two ethyl four, not two ethyl four, that means that two and four are from the same, it will be two ethyl four methyl heptane. So this two and ethyl put together to mean is one thing. Four and methyl put together to mean one thing, then heptane comes again. So we have two ethyl four methyl heptane. That is the name of this particular compound. Now viewers, I want to give you one last example which I think most students confuse. That sometimes we have a chain which is bending and then it is confused to be a branch. If I have C, 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 then another one is here. I have this one here. So viewers, this is a question that I want us to look at very carefully, very, very carefully, very, very carefully and keenly, because if we don't, we might not just understand what is happening here. <sighs> okay, this one I can still just write C, C. H there, H and H. So viewers, we have this compound here. We want to first of all determine the straight chain. The straight chain, if I start from here, is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. It's not straight. But it's the longest carbon-carbon chain. We said a chain can bend. A chain is not uh, a piece of metal which is just stiff, like this part here. A chain is something flexible. So it means it can take any shape. Maybe a circular, something like a circular, something straight, something wave-like. So we have uh, chains, very many chains in this case. But we are going to choose the one with the longest carbon, carbon atoms. So if I start one, two, three, four, there's one with four. One, two, three, four, five, six. There's one with six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Another six. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There's one with eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There's one with seven. You see the way I'm counting them. 
probably if this one continued here, it could be the longest. So it means anything from it could be branching, but unluckily it is not the longest. One, two, three, four, five, five. So it means the longest chain is this one. This one coming from here, coming down here, going there. Sometimes cycling the longest chain like this helps you to understand what is actually branching. So after I isolate it the way I've done, it means that this is a branch here. There's a branch here. There's another branch here. And then there's a branch here. So viewers, we have three branches. But out of these three branches, this branch and that branch are identical. At least we have something identical. This is not. So we are going to have a name which applies what we have discussed in the previous example. So what is the stem name of the chain with eight carbon atoms? Eight is here, oct. So I'm going to have oct. But this oct here, it is having single bonds all over, so it's alkane. So I'll say octane is the parent name. After identifying the parent name, I have to come to the prefixes. And for me to come to the prefixes, I now have CH3, CH3, methyl. C2H5, here. That is ethyl. So ethyl is one, but methyl are two. I know that ethyl and methyl, E comes first. So ethyl will come this other side, but methyl will be last to be mentioned. So methyl will come closer here. But this methyl are two. There's one here, there's one here. So we bring in multiplying prefixes, that is di. Then di here, what do we bring? We bring in the locants. The locants are, one is here, another one is here. Then let's see. If I start here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, or one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So if I start from here, the first locant is three. If I start from here, the locant becomes four. So it means the locant I'm going to start from is three, four, five. So I'm going to say three, comma, five. I've identified the locants for the dimethyl. There were two methyls. The first methyl is on the third carbon atom. The second metal is on the fifth carbon atom. If I started here, it will be four and six. And we said those numbers will not be okay because four and six and three and five, this is better because the, four, the smallest number is down here. So we are finished with dimethyl. Let's go to ethyl. And ethyl, since we have started from here, we have to continue here because this ethyl is between the two methyls that we had. So we cannot come and come here because it, we start here at one, two, three, four, five, six, the, 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 the fifth carbon atom. But we start here, one, two, three, four, four carbon atoms. So we are going to say this is four ethyl, four ethyl, three, five dimethyl octane. This is the name of this compound. And viewers, we can make it as complicated as it can be. But as based on your syllabuses, you don't need to handle very much more complicated cases. The cases you are going to be in exam will just be very simple, probably having five carbon atoms, a one branch, or two identical branches. So, but now we have looked at at least some more complicated cases to deal with, and I believe the lesson has been very enjoyable. Please um, take your book and look for some comp examples. Try those examples there. I hope you have your textbook at home. Ask a question. If you meet a challenge anywhere, we will respond as soon as we are able to so that we can help you do this case. The next thing we are going to look for now is what we call isomerism. So viewers, the next thing we are doing now is isomerism. And isomerism, once we understand what we have done before about naming of these particular compounds, understanding what isomers are will be simply very, very easy. Now. Uh, isomerism come from the word isomers. I prefer starting to understand what isomers are before we look at what we call isomerism. Now, 
in this isomerism, we are looking at what we call structural isomerism. Structural isomerism. Remember, we have other types of isomerism, which we look at later on when you go to higher studies. Um, we have geometric isomerism and also structural isomerism. But geometric is not part of our lessons. We are dealing with the structural isomerism, meaning the structures. Now, isomers, let me start by explaining what isomers are. Isomers are compounds or molecules with the same molecular formula, but different structural formula. That definition may look very, 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 very uh, abstract, but let us try to put it into context. If I try to put in uh, this particular compound, if I put in this compound you see here, this is, uh, this compound we can give it a name. The name is that it has four carbon atoms and uh, it is a straight chain, there's no branch, so it means this one is simply butane. This is butane. Let us call it compound A. But let me do something with this compound here. I can simply do some chisel, some game with this compound here. By taking this part here, this part here, I want to carry it to bring it here. I'm doing interchange, I'm changing the positions. So while this one will come here and stick here, this hydrogen will go back and take that position. Let us see what will, what will happen there. It will be C, C, because I'm taking one carbon, it will now be three, and the other carbon will be coming down here. So we'll have H, 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 H here, and then H, H, and H here. So this compound here, uh, if you look at this butane here, the molecular formula will be C4H10. It is 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. What about if I come to this one? What's the name of this one? We have known how to name this compound. So the chain, the strong, longest chain is 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, 3. One, two, three. It's 3, 3. So I'll go with this, the, the straight one to make my work easy. It means this is a branching group here. So the name that I'm going to get here, the, 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 the stem name here with three carbon atoms is prop. So prop. But it is an N because it has single carbon bonds. So I'll say propane. But the branch here, if I take this as the straight, the chain I'm talking about, the branch is methyl, CH3. So this methyl here is located on 1, 2, 1, 2. Whichever end I start from on the second carbon atom. So I'll say 2 methyl. 2 methyl propane. But this 2 methyl propane, remember the, the, form, the molecular formula is also 1, 2, 3, 4, C4, H. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So again, 10. Now, viewers, this is very clear. This compound here, the structure and the structure of this compound here are not the same. If you look at, if you're doing structural formula, we know structural formula, I said it could be CH3, CH, CH3, CH3. This is the structural formula of this compound. The structural formula of this compound is CH3, CH2, CH2, CH3. CH3. Can you tell me that this structure and these ones are the same? The answer is no. The structures are different, but the molecular formulas are the same. It means that compound A and compound B, that is butane and 2-methylpropane, are referred to as isomers. That's very clear to me. I don't know whether I need to add something, but let me just repeat. I've drawn a straight chain of butane. Then I've drawn another chain of, of, of 2-methylpropane. We can see the structural formula is here, or a bigger one is here, another one is here. Compare this and this, you see a difference in the structures. But when you come to the molecular formulas, you see 4H10. So it means that the, the structural formula are different, the molecular formulas are the same. 
It means the names of these isomers must also be the same. This is butane, but this is 2-methylpropane. But if you are trying to draw these things together, you try to separate them and draw their display form, structural formulas, you are going to realize that the molecular formula, the number of carbon atoms in each of them is the same, and the number of hydrogen atoms in both of them are also the same. That is what we call isomers. So isomers, therefore, isomers are compounds, compounds or molecules, molecules with different structural formula, structural formula, but same molecular formula. Remember, you can say isomers are composed of molecules with the same molecular formula but different structure. That is up to you. Whatever you start with is not going to depend or, or determine whether you are going to score it or not, as long as basically the meaning of the sentence remains the same. That these compounds have different structural formula, like the example you have seen here, but they have the same molecular formula, what we have seen here. Those are isomers. And you have seen that I'm actually drawing them and naming them. A common question we are going to meet in school when teachers are giving you to give, draw isomers, two isomers, and give their names. That is something that you are going to find very, very common in your case. Now, what is isomerism, therefore? I want us to go to what we call human beings and humanity. Humanity can't be human beings. But human beings must possess some humanity. Now, uh, some of these compounds, if I say methane, methane is CH4. Whatever way you want to write this thing, you can't get different structures. Whatever you do to methane, whether you rotate and draw it this way, the structure will remain the same. Meaning, methane cannot show isomerism. What about ethane? The same. Ethane, whatever you do, whether you take this carbon, bring it down here, whether you do what, the structure of ethane will remain the same. It means that the first three members, ethane, methane, propane, propane is here. Propane also cannot form an isomer, isomer any isomer. So the first three members, methane, Ethane and propane do not show isomerism, although they are members. I don't know whether you have heard people saying so and so is inhuman, meaning maybe it doesn't have a soul. Or yeah, you, you can imagine such people. Look at them like ethane, propane, they don't show isomerism. Now from number four, going onwards, number four has the least number of isomers, followed by number five. The bigger the molecule, the higher the number of isomers you can get. We are going to see at least one more example. We see that in number four here, we can only get two isomers. This and this are the only isomers you can get. Whatever you do to this compound, you are not going to get something else. Even if you bring this one here, the straight chain will be here. This will be a branch. You bring it, uh, I don't know where, the compound will just refuse. That you, if you want to know that the compound you are dealing with is the same, sometimes students get confused. They draw very many things, but they don't know they are repeating. If you want to know that the thing, what you are dealing with is the same, write their names. If the name is the same name that you wrote somewhere else, that compound is the same, same compound. And that comes in because of the rule we said, naming from the right, from the left, based on which end is closer to. That rule there is very, very important. So that we are going to see an example there where I'm going to try to bring that idea in so that we see. Now, isomerism, is the existence. Isomerism is the existence of compounds with the same molecular formula but different structural formula. So basically the definition of isomers and isomerism kind of are very the same. One is just are compounds with, another one is the existence of compounds with. So isomerism is the existence of compounds with the same molecular formula but different structural formula. But isomers are the compounds Humanity is what human beings have, but human beings are the things that have that humanity. So let those terms not confuse you. 
the existence of compounds, meaning one, two, three, number one, two, three, alkanes do not show isomerism. And therefore, we cannot get isomers from them. But from number four, like butane here we have seen, it can show isomerism. So there is existence. Butane has existence of compounds with the same molecular formula, but different structural formula. Viewers, I think I've tried to make you understand the difference between isomerism and isomers. Examiner can ask any of them or both of them so that you see how you will get mixed up. I said isomerism is the existence of compounds with the same molecular formula but different structural formula. Isomers are the compounds with different structural formula but the same molecular formula. Now, let me bring you to what we call uh, uh, example two. We have seen butane, isomers of butane. We have said that they are just two. What, what about if we bring in, uh, we bring in heptane. We bring in heptane. Heptane, let me start with the straight chain. Heptane we know, one, two, three, four, five, is number seven. Seven there. So if you want to know that the compounds are isomers, structures may not be the way to go. Write their molecular formulas. If the molecular formulas are not the same, start again. You have added something. In isomerism, you should not add anything. What we need to do, just play around with these things, change positions. Don't add anything, don't remove anything from that particular compound. So this is the first isomer. This is isomer number one. And this isomer number one is called heptane. What about isomer number two? Which we can get from the first one. So number two, just like I said, I can take this end here. Remember, if I take this end and bring it here, it's just heptane because I'll count it this way. So what I have to do here in this case is that if I take apart this end here, I must put it to the second carbon atom in the middle, from here to here. It can't be here, it can't be there. Because if it is there, it is going to have a bend, but the chain is still the same, same chain. For example, if I have something like this, this is a bend, there's no branch here. So we should avoid that. We have to make it a branch, meaning if you take it from here, skip the first carbon, put it from the second as you go like that. So if I take it and I say the middle one, now if I take one, there will be six. Uh, those are five, six. So I can't put this branch here, but I can put it either here to there. I, I'm free to put it there. Now I put it there. So if I put it there, I have this H, this CH3, H, 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 Good. So this compound here, it has one, two, three, four, five, six. So six meaning the parent name is exen. The branch is on the second from here because from the other side it will be five. So it is uh, two methyl, two methyl hexane. Two methyl hexane. That's the name. Now that's isomer. We are finished with that. Number three. It's very simple. Just take this one, move it there, and bring this hydrogen here, and we have another isomer. One, two, three, four, five, six. We have it was here, now we have brought it here. CH3. So viewers, you see this thing is like a game. It's like a game. But once you move it, I'll take you until you see what I want to take you to so that we can learn something that is very important today. So here again, you see here it was on the second. Here now it is on the third. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yes, it's on the third. So if it's on the third carbon atom here, it means that we are going to name it from this other end. So it will be, uh, this was two. This will be three. One, two, three. One, two, three, four. So this will be three. Methyl hexane. 
I know because we have said, just move it, just move it. Someone will move it here and say, now it's okay. Let's try that. Let's try that and see. So one, two, three, four, five, six. It was here. Now let's move it there. So CH3. H, 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 H. H everywhere. So if you have this one here, we want to name it now. You see that we have moved it here. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. So we have to name it from the other end now. So it means we are still going to have three methyl hexane. I want you to know very well. Initially, we are naming from here. Why? Because this thing was still closer to this end. But now moving it to the next one, it is one, two, three, four. But the other end, it is one, two, three. So we have to start from the other end, meaning it is attached to the third carbon atom. You realize that this name and this name are the same. It means that this compound and this are the same. The only thing we did is we took it and we tilted it this way. So be clever enough to understand that if your shirt is hung upside down, it doesn't appear to be another shirt. It's the same, same shirt. The only thing is that this pen, if I put it this way, it's still the same pen. If I rotate this way, don't come and tell me those pen are now two. If you put it this way, now there are three. If you put it this way, now there are four. No, 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 no. The pen is still the same, same pen. Look at the structural arrangement. So this compound and this are one in the same. And I told you, how do you tell? Write their names. You see what has happened? The names are the same. The moment you see the names are the same, please rub one out. Cancel and know that you are wrong before you walk to the teacher to be able to ask whether you are right. Some of you like are giving the teachers. Once we have seen one branch moving like that and we are finished, we see we have reached up to this level, up to this level. We cannot do another one branch. This single branch can no longer move past that. It means that we using this one branch, we can only get twice or much, this and this. So after we exhaust that, we go to bringing in two branches now. So we take another end, we start attaching it. And that is more interesting. I, we can't exhaust all these isomers. Believe me, we can't exhaust them. For me to exhaust them, we are going to do a lot of work until maybe you will get lost. But let me do that one and bring another branch to this structure and see what happens. We are going to form another different isomer. So the fourth one, I want to make the fourth one from this one. So from this one, I want to take this branch and I want to bring it here. Then I start moving it, moving it, moving it until we reach where we should be. So it will be C, C, C. Now there are going to be five Cs because now we have taken two out. Remember it was, it was heptane, seven. So if I take two as branching, two minus seven, it will become five. So in my chain, I've said that I'll start with them, both of them there. And uh, One, two, three, four, five, one, two. Now, this compound here, what I did, I took this part here. I brought it here, hmm? where it is now. I took that hydrogen there. That's the hydrogen that was there. Remember, I'm not taking anything out. I'm not adding any foreign thing. So what we are doing in this case, again, we have a different isomer. So what we are going to do, we name it. Naming it means one, two. One, two, three, four. So it means that we have the locant is two for both of these things. So we are going to have two comma two di methyl methyl one, two, three, four, five, pentane. So you see this name and this name and that name and this name are not the same. So those are all isomers. I can move it here. I have another name. I can move this one there, another have isomer, but I can't move it there. If I move this one there, I have this compound. Believe me. Believe me what I'm saying. If I move this part here, I can move it here, it's okay. I can move it there, it's okay. But the moment I move it here, I have this compound again. You are going to see the name appearing like this, so that is not isomer. So every time for you to know that the, the compound you are doing, you have exhausted all, 
be writing their names. Or even if you don't write, try to say their names on your head, get their names, and then you'll see whether you are actually drawing the same, same compound. After you exhaust two branches, you can bring a third one. Until you are reaching a level where you think you cannot move anymore, then you know you have exhausted all of them. You can bring a third branch, a fourth branch, until you feel now the compound is actually finished. I want to tell you that I've used an example of methyls brass branches. But like we said before, a branching can be ethyl. You just have to know, is it having two carbon atoms and five hydrogen atoms? A branch can be halogens and so on. If it is halogens, could be chlorine, could be bromine. Chlorine, you just see Cl. Bromine is Br. Uh, 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 iodine is I. Fluorine is F. Remember this one much easier because this one, you just change the positions. Change the position and write their names knowing that you don't have to repeat. I can't do all that to one viewers. Some of them you have to do on your own, on your own. And like I said, if you have any problem that you have disturbing you, especially in this area, I'm simply at a back on call. Please comment down and I will surely follow you up. If you have a phone number, put it there. I will get to you back either through WhatsApp or through other means to be able to explain to you. Uh, if you have questions we have done and you want me to go through, please, my number is on, on, on the YouTube. Just go to it, get it, and please come to us or link to us very quickly. You can go to our Facebook page. There are numbers here. You can directly link to us through WhatsApp so that we can help you if you are stuck somewhere. I want you to understand this chapter. I don't just want you to say we have learned, but I want you to understand and actually understand what we are doing. I've said what we have been doing with methyl here as our example, you can do with halogens as well, bromine, iodine, fluorine. You can also do with ethyl, propyl, uh, butyl, pentyl, if you can actually locate that that is actually what is occurring there. So viewers, I understand, I believe you have understood what we call isomers and isomerism their definitions. I also hope that you have understood how to form isomers from an existing structure, like if you are given a straight chain structure like this. From there you can get as many isomers as is required in the equation and be able to make those isomers from what is existing from a name or so on. And then from that name, be able to Give the names of each isomer you have given. It's very important because I've said the names will tell you whether you are repeating an isomer or not. Now, the last thing in our lesson today, I want to explain what we call cycloalkanes. I want to explain to you what we call cycloalkanes. It's going to be the last part of our lesson today so that uh, the next time we come back, we will be talking about how to prepare alkanes in the laboratory, their chemical properties, meaning how they react with other elements, and finally, we are going to talk about physical properties, things that we can see, solubility, density, uh, and also we are going to finally talk about how, where uh, these alkanes are very important to us. So there's something called cycloalkanes. Now, cycloalkanes, the word cyclo, cycle, cycle, hmm? the carbon cycle. The nitrogen cycle. A cycle is something actually, let's talk about chains. We have talked about chains. You have seen chains, how they form. We said that carbon can link with another carbon to form a chain, but they can also link to form what we call a ring. So cycloalkanes are actually the rings. These are the rings of alkanes. Now, it means that um, these alkanes, you can find alkane that is written this way alkane that has three carbon atoms linking. So if it links, it means we can have hydrogen there, hydrogen there, and then we have hydrogen here. So this one, we cannot say this is a propane. Of course, you will be attempted to say that because it has three uh, carbon atoms, but these three carbon atoms are not forming a chain. The chain we simply say propane. But this is now a ring. It's a ring, so we add the word cyclopropane. So it will be cyclopropane. Cyclopropane. There's something I want to invite you to understand that we know the general formula of alkanes. Cycloalkanes are alkanes, but not isomers of alkanes. Why? The general formula of alkanes was CNH2N plus 2. But cycloalkanes, let's see. 1, 2, 3. C3. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 
H6. You see, it is N to N. So it means that if you have CN, H to N. This is going to be alkenes. It means that cycloalkanes are isomers of alkenes. For example, the propene. Propene in a, is an isomer of cyclopropane. That's a confusing thing, but we are going to see, bring into alkenes, and I'm going to bring this thing back again to you. We can say, how are cycloalkanes different from alkanes? Because they don't have the same general formula. How are they similar? They both have single carbon-carbon bonds. So they have single carbon-carbon bonds because they, that's why we call them alkanes. But they are not isomers of alkanes because their general formulas are not the same. But I've said cycloalkanes are isomers of alkenes. Let me explain to you what I mean here. This is propene. I know I should not be starting alkenes, but for the purposes of making you understand what I'm actually explaining here, is this. This is uh, propene. Propene is C3H6, exactly what we have here. But the structures are not the same. So it means that propene here and cyclopropane there have different structural formula, but have the same molecular formula. So alkenes and cycloalkanes of corresponding numbers of carbon atoms are isomers. Then how do we form cyclopropane from here? We break one bond, one hangs here, another one hangs here. Good. But we can't join this and this because it will not make sense. So we take this hydrogen here to take this position. Once that hydrogen there here, this bond hangs there. Once that bond hangs here, this one and this links together to form what we have there. That is what we call cycloalkanes. We can't form cycloethane, we can't form cyclomethane. For you to form cyclopropanes, and for cycloalkanes I mean it must be from the third carbon atoms going forward, like a triangle. A triangle. No polygons in mathematics. The first polygon is a triangle. Because uh, uh, something with two sides can't form a polygon. So polygon is the first one. It's triangle, quadrilateral, uh, pentagon, as you move hexagon, as you move like, it's exactly what we have here. So we form a triangle three sides as we go on. We form cycloalkanes from three carbon atoms as we move forward. What is cyclobutane? Just we said, join the carbon atoms. Those are four. Remember, if they are four, each carbon will have two. Why? Because already, already one carbon, one carbon. This carbon already has two carbon atoms spent, so we need only to add uh, two more. So this one is here. Remember, carbon can never have more than four carbon atoms. If in your compound there are more than four carbon atoms, come carbon bonds, I mean covalent bonds, sorry, covalent bonds coming from one carbon atom, already you are wrong. This one here is called cyclobutane. Cyclobutane is an isomer of what? Pen, uh, I mean butene. Butene being the one with four carbon atoms, this one is isomer. I said, how is this one similar to butane? Both have single bonds. But when you come to the other one, both have double bonds. You see double bonds in alkenes, but we don't have here. So from here we can have cyclopropane, cyclobutane, cyclopentane, cyclohexane, cyclopentane, cyclooctane, cyclodecane, cyclododecane. There are very many cyclo cyclo that you can get as long as that you are starting from the third carbon atom moving onwards. So they are also alkanes, and they must be treated as the other alkanes because if you test them, they'll show you the same same behavior as alkanes. Viewers, that's the end of our lesson today. Uh, in our next lesson, we are going to be discussing, I said, how to make alkanes in the, the laboratory and how to also uh, talk about other things. So viewers, welcome, and I hope you are enjoying the lesson. Bye-bye for today. Let's meet next time.